It was a morning like any other in the neighborhood of home. The sun was shining, the flowers were blooming. Days like these were inviting anyone in the neighborhood for a good morning stroll. Yawning, you crawl out of your pillow fort. A great construction out of velcro, blankets, pillows and Christmas lights. Your back ached and your eyes felt watery. For reasons unknown to you, you had big troubles falling asleep on a conventional bed. But sleeping on a bunch of decorative blankets and plush toys inside a pillow fort wasn't really optimal either. But it worked. Growling to yourself, you were a bit grouchy in the morning. You made your first stop in the bathroom for your morning routine. Apply red paint to your cheeks, oiling the seams of your mouth and brushing your hair. You weren't like other puppets, as corny as that sounded. Well, yes, your body, arms and legs were made out of soft cotton. Your hands, feet and head were crafted from wood. Your head was a similar round shape to that of regular humanoid puppets. Your mouth had a retracting mechanism allowing you to open and close it. The paint on the wood was a pleasant white, your lips as red as roses, and the glass doll eyes that had been skillfully placed into your eye sockets could open and close. Your hair was made up of countless small bundles of cotton candy pink thread that reached down to your back, and a bulbous red nose decorated the center of your head. It was made of rubber and could be squeezed to create the sound similar to that of a dog toy. Your wooden hands had a couple of seams to allow you to grab things, and your feet were purple socks with a couple of stars stitched onto them. Once you were happy with your parents, you waddled back into your bedroom to put on your clothes. White silly pants with red polka dots and a long pink dress held together with a big white bow around your hip. Proudly you place your hands on them, only for your back to once again send a shock of pain throughout your body. And you were just starting to enjoy the day. Couldn't even enjoy a small moment all to yourself. Reaching into your pill drawer, you pulled out the last bottle. And, damn it, only one left. Because of your unique dummy body, normal puppet medicine needed a double dosage. Sighing, you took that one anyways. It would barely do anything, but should keep your spirits up to get to Howdy Pillar's store to buy new ones. You put on your regular pair of jester boots before leaving your house. With your tired eyes, you looked up at the beautiful sky, wishing you could appreciate it. But you couldn't. Not until this terrible pain was gone. You were so focused on distracting yourself that you didn't notice your neighbors. They were doing things, normal things, sure, but they were completely ignoring you. Normally they would shower you with good mornings and hellos and how are yous, but now they were doing their regular routines without acknowledging you. This pattern continued until you entered Howdy Pillar's store. Hey Howdy, you said absentmindedly. The caterpillar didn't answer, he was sorting the spices on the shelf behind the counter. Patiently waited for him to finish. Watching as he sat down, on the chair, looking straight forward written to you. I'll take the usual, you said. He once again didn't answer. You narrowed your eyes, waving your hand in front of his face. Hello? If you could scowl and or purse your lips, you would. You then poked his nose. Hey, you complained. 
and suddenly he jolted up. Finally, you scoffed. Hey, Wally, how are you, neighbor? He turned around. The painter had entered with a walking cane. Hey there, old chap, how do you do? Wally, what's going on? Why is no one talking to me? You complained, but the painter just walked forward, shoving you between him and the counter. Your left eye twitched as you were pressed against his warm, soft body. Though despite you pushing back against him, he was like a statue. You turned your dummy head 180 degrees to look at Howdy. The two puppets were having a regular conversation with you just squeezed against Wally. Like you weren't even there. After Wally told Howdy an unbelievably corny and bad joke, the Gatabullet chuckled and placed a fresh red apple on the counter. Smugly, you grabbed it before the painter could, but his hand just took hold of the air. This one looks great, Howdy. Thanks. And as if nothing happened, he began chewing the air and walking outside. You sighed in relief, no longer being squeezed by the yellow puppet, but this was still crazy. If you couldn't manipulate your surroundings, you'd think you died and were a spooky ghost. Even Howdy had returned to a regular sitting position. He sighed, taking a bite out of the apple, proving once and for all you were still alive. <laughs> Technically this was Wally's, but if no one acted like you were there, might as well act like this world is your own. Sue so jumped on the counter, reached for the bottle of back pain pills, and just took it. Once more scoffing, you left the store, bottle and apple in hand. The strangeness continued as you walked the streets of home, with no one acknowledging you, just going on with their day. So alien was this experience. You didn't even notice the lack of back pain as the pills started working. You stopped in front of Julie Joyful's house. The girl puppet was mowing her lawn. And then... Hey, Rosie! She... She said your name. Well, not your full name. Your full name was Rosie Lovenstein. Still, uh, confused, you took a step back. Uh, you can see me? You asked, concerned. Of course I can, silly. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Well, you felt like one. You rushed to the gate of her lawn, almost tumbling on the ground as you did. Now Julie was worried, tilting her head. She listened as you explained the situation. The blonde puppet, however, just laughed. Oh, they're just having a simple rerun. Rerun? Julie nodded. What's a rerun? Julie gasped. <gasps> You really don't know what a rerun is? It's a phenomenon that happens all around the world in practically every community. She explained that for unknown reasons, towns and puppets occasionally just redid everything they did on a previous day that happened in the past. It sounded absolutely frightening. You never had a deja vu, huh? A what? A deja vu is when you feel like what you're doing already happened. It's a really spooky feeling, I'll tell you. It's the proof. The proof that today is a rerun. It already happened. You exhaled, exhausted. This was so crazy to you. How come you never experienced this? I'm genuinely intrigued. You shrugged. Hmm... Well, you did only recently move here, so maybe that's why you didn't have it yet, but where did you live before? I'm sure that you must have experienced one. I... I'm a circus puppet, you said. A traveling circus. I did my routines. I... I, I did every day the same, more or less. Well, if your job is to do the same show over and over, of course you wouldn't notice going through a rerun. Well, don't worry. Tomorrow everything should go back to normal. You exhaled. This was a little much for you. 
Do you want to come inside? Have a tea, maybe? I don't think I should. You said after thinking for a while. Just do yourself a favor. Don't run into them. They'll just walk right through you. You nodded. Yeah. Already have, I guess. Wally pressed me against the counter of Howdy's store. Trust me, it's much less kinky than it was. Are you hurt? You shrugged. My pride? But that's it. You admit it. Should have smacked him, but... Well, knowing he wouldn't even have flinched takes all the fun out of imagining it. Julie giggled. <laughs> You're funny. It was late in the evening. After the stressful day, you had decided to just bury yourself in your pillow fort. And forget you even woke up today. But when you got up to make yourself a snack, you spotted Wally and Barnaby. They stopped at your front yard's gate and looked at your house. Narrowing your eyes suspiciously, you put down your wooden spoon and went outside. Just then you heard Wally ask, Do you think someone will ever live in this house? Seriously? You shouted, running at them, scowling, or at least trying to. It was practically impossible with your wooden mouth. I'm right here, you shouted. I'm sure we'll get a super nice neighbor, said Barnaby. Oh, I hope so. I always love meeting new people. I'm gonna bite you, you shouted at the pair. That will force you to say something. Angrily, you jumped forward. But as you bit Wally's fingers, it was like biting into moss-covered concrete. Like the first few millimeters were soft, and the rest just hard. Instantly you jump back, coughing and retching. Thank God Julie didn't saw this. She'd be rolling on her back laughing. Damn it! You cried. As the two continued talking about the fun day they had. Well, it wasn't fun for me! You complained. Hey, do you want a hot dog? Asked Barnaby. Nah, I'm good. Had this really good apple earlier. Yeah, me too. In fact, it was the same apple. Yeah, me too. In fact, it was the same apple you had, Painter. It was delicious. You scoffed. And Poppy has invited me for dinner later. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna snatch that one too. You complained. Even though you knew you wouldn't. Grumbling, you retreated back into your humble abode. It was only late at night, when a ringing came from your door at around 3 a.m. Annoyed, you crawled out of your pillow fort. But as you opened the door, you were surprised. It was... Wally. Hey, he said straight up. You looked behind yourself. You're talking to me, right? Yes, I, I am. You placed your hands on your hips. Okay. Uh, Julie called me after our rerun was over, and she said you seemed upset. After you didn't reply for a few seconds, he asked, May I come in? Sure. Wally plopped down on your living room sofa. You sat next to him, your body leaning against the armrest as you looked at the floor. She told me that was your first ever rerun and that no one told you that they're a thing. You didn't respond. <sighs> All right, he said after a minute. I want to say something, but uh, I feel it would be corny. Just go ahead. How do you feel right now? I can only guess. Sad? You looked at him, eyes wide in almost offended shock. It's my mouth, right? He said with a deadpan tone. Yeah, it's your mouth.
I would be frowning if I could. I just keep thinking most of my life at the circus was doing one or three different acts. Every day was the same, more or less. You'd think it wouldn't be with a traveling one, but I was. I'm just thinking. How many days of my life were reruns and I just didn't realize because everything just blended together. Wally gulped. This sounded much more complex than anything he had expected. Unless... Hmm, there was a hint of... It's your pride that's earned, huh? You cross your arms. Maybe... <laughs> he chuckled. Well, that was something he could work with. It's okay, it's perfectly normal, it happens. You'd scowl if you could. He placed a hand on yours. You ran me over. You grumbled. Oh? In Howdy's store. So I re-ran you over? You blinked. Don't tell me that's an actual word for it. No, I was just making a pun. You rolled your eyes. <sighs> you know puns are the fastest way into a clown girl's heart. Well, that's hard to believe. You're right, I twitched. That one was terrible. <laughs> oh god, that one was terrible. His grip tightened a little. Well, we won't wanna... Miss a beat of any jokes, huh? Your fingers intertwined as he pulled you into him. Lying in his arms, he said. Mm, call me an insect because I'm feeling romantic. <sighs> How do you manage to be positive in a situation like this? <laughs> because the little puppet I'm looking at right now makes me feel like... It's 282 degrees outside. Because my blood is boiling with nothing but passion right now. His lips slowly touched yours. He was surprised. Sure, you couldn't purse them. And the wood was relatively cool, but you didn't care. Right now, he just wanted you. What's the least he could do after scaring you earlier today? And judging by the quiet moans you were doing as the two of you made out, you were enjoying it. His hand began to gently explore your soft body. As your wooden fingers began to dig into his shoulders. He turned gently, laying you down on your back as he pinned you down. The painter looked at you lovingly. As you began to fiddle with a bow that was holding your dress together. I'm going to blow your back out, little dummy. He groaned. Oh, I hope so. You purred. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive.